Jackie Gleason was a talented artist who worked in the music department, creating sounds that many people enjoyed. His work has touched lives and left lasting memories. We're curious to hear from you. Do you have a story about how Jackie Gleason's music influenced you? Is there a particular piece by him that stands out to you as a defining moment in his career? What is your most treasured memory related to Jackie Gleason? Your stories and memories are important to us, so please share them in the comments. Stay tuned as we have many interesting facts about Jackie Gleason coming up, including some that are funny, shocking, and even sad. Your insights will add great value to our discussion. Jackie Gleason was a prominent figure in the music department for various projects, particularly known for his work on soundtracks. His most recognized projects include creating music for The Hustler and Requiem for a Heavyweight. For those new to his work, the must-watch movies are The Hustler, which showcases his ability to enhance the film's mood through music, and Jig It, where his musical talent is evident throughout the film. Gleason's music sets a tone that is both fitting for the era and timeless in its appeal, making these films a good starting point for appreciating his musical contributions to cinema. Jackie Gleason, recognized for his role as Ralph Cramden in The Honeymooners, was celebrated by the U.S. Postal Service with a commemorative stamp. This stamp, part of the early TV Memories issue, featured Gleason alongside Art Carney, who played Ed Norton. Gleason's talent extended beyond the small screen. He brought Sheriff Buford T. Justice to Life in Smokey and The Bandit. His creative input led to the addition of Junior Justice, providing a dynamic for his character in the film. Gleason's contributions to comedy are documented in Who's Who in Comedy by Ronald L. Smith, highlighting his significant place in television history. Jackie Gleason, with roots tracing back to Ireland and a mix of English and Dutch heritage from his grandparents, made a significant mark in the entertainment industry. His role as U.S. Bates in The Toy showcased his ability to adapt a French film concept for American audiences alongside Richard Pryor. Beyond acting, Gleason's influence extended to television production, notably with stage show where he introduced Elvis Presley to national audiences. Despite his initial skepticism about Presley's longevity, Gleason's own legacy in show business remains undisputed. Jackie Gleason, a prominent figure in the music department, faced the common challenge of maintaining a youthful image in an industry that often values youth over experience. This pressure is not unique to Gleason. Many in the entertainment field feel compelled to appear young, which can lead to stress and anxiety. Additionally, Gleason dealt with the typical struggles of life in the public eye, such as maintaining privacy, managing stress from constant scrutiny, and balancing personal life with a demanding career. These struggles are intensified by the public's expectations and the fast-paced nature of the music industry. Despite these challenges, Gleason continued to work and perform, showing resilience and dedication to his craft. Jackie Gleason's portrayal of U.S. Bates and the toy sparked discussions, with some suggesting his role would be more fitting as the grandfather. Despite this, it's not uncommon for men to become fathers later in life. Gleason's talent was recognized when he won the Tony Award for Best Actor in a Musical for Take Me Along in 1960, triumphing over fellow nominees Walter Pidgeon and Robert Morse. In The Honeymooners, Gleason's character Ralph Cramden became a household name, while Art Carney, who played Ed Norton, actually made his first appearance as a police officer in an earlier sketch on The Jackie Gleason Show. Jackie Gleason's career was marked by both missed opportunities and memorable reunions. Initially set to team up with Art Carney atop a Ferris wheel in Steven Spielberg's 1941, Gleason ultimately declined the role. Despite this, he later joined forces with Carney in the television movie Is E in Mo, sharing equal billing in a unique arrangement. In a tribute to his enduring character Ralph Cramden from The Honeymooners, a bronze statue was unveiled at the New York City Port Authority bus terminal by Teveland in August 2000. Gleason's creative input significantly shaped the film Smokey and The Bandit, where he played Sheriff Buford T. Justice. He proposed an improvised cafe scene with Burt Reynolds that became a highlight of the movie. Jackie Gleason showed his skills on the pool table in The Hustler, playing the role of Minnesota Fats. Unlike many films, the actors, including Gleason and Paul Newman, performed their own pool shots. The only exception was the complex masse shot, which was executed by professional player Willie Moscone. In Smokey and the Bandit, Gleason brought to life Sheriff Buford T. Justice, inspired by Burt Reynolds' stories about his father. 
His portrayal included the memorable use of the word sumbitch, reflecting the character's southern roots. Outside of acting, Gleason took an active role in politics, supporting Richard Nixon in both the 1968 and 1972 elections. Jackie Gleason brought to life the character of Sheriff Buford T. Justice and Smokey, and the bandit with such flair that it overshadowed the planned scenes with co-star Burt Reynolds. The reasons behind the change remain unexplained. Gleason was not only an actor, but also left his mark in the music industry. He produced albums of instrumental music, leading as a bandleader, and occasionally playing the vibraphone. His lack of formal music education didn't stop him from composing original pieces. His album Lonesome Echo was a hit in 1955, featuring cover art by Salvador Dali. Gleason's life was one of extremes, often leading to exhaustion. He had a unique way of recuperating, sometimes leaving the hospital to recover at home, which became an anecdote about his approach to health and rest. Jackie Gleason's talent was recognized by the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences with his induction into their Hall of Fame, a testament to his influence on television. His role as U.S. Bates in the Toys showcased his comedic ability, playing a father who lets his son choose any gift, leading to the unexpected choice of Richard Pryor's character. In The Honeymooners, Gleason portrayed Ralph Cramden, a character initially envisioned as a police officer. Gleason felt that a position of authority did not suit Ralph, leading to the bus driver character that became beloved by audiences. His instinct for character development contributed significantly to the show's success and the lasting appeal of Ralph Cramden. Jackie Gleason brought to life the character of Sheriff Buford T. Justice and Smokey and the bandit, leaving a lasting impression with his portrayal. The film's production was notable for its use of Pontiac Trans Ams, which became synonymous with the series. Despite requesting six for the stunts, only four were provided, and by the final scene, three had been destroyed, leading to an improvised solution for the last car's appearance. The sequel saw an increased allocation of vehicles, reflecting the success of the original. Additionally, the Miami Beach Auditorium's renaming to the Jackie Gleason Theater signifies his influence and legacy. Gleason's admiration for Jack Oakey, whom he considered his favorite comedic actor, also speaks to the influences that shaped his own approach to comedy. These elements together paint a picture of Gleason's impact on entertainment and popular culture. Jackie Gleason's life and work are chronicled in the Scribner Encyclopedia of American Lives where his biography spans four pages. His childhood influenced his work, notably the set of The Honeymooners, which mirrored his Chauncey Street home in Brooklyn. This neighborhood, once known as Bushwick, now bears the Bedford-Stuyvesant name. The apartment building from his youth remains standing, largely unchanged. In honor of Gleason, Brooklyn's Fifth Avenue bus depot now carries his name, serving as a lasting tribute to the entertainer's legacy in his hometown. 